video coming to give you life show in this video i'm going to show you how to achieve a lavender candy apple if you are new to my channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to let you know your girl rochelle is on and we're gonna get into the video please for those that will be re-watching this video this is a live recorded video so there will be questions answered in this video and also i'm going to answer some questions that was asked in the previous video a few of those questions before i take any other questions and we're going to get started for all supplies that will be demonstrated in this video will be in the description box up under this video in the description in the description box all right so let's get started this morning I already have my half cup of water in the pot all right i'm doing a half mixture the half mixture consists of two cups of sugar that's two cups of granulated sugar half cup of water and a half cup of light corn syrup all right so i'm gonna go ahead and add in my two cups of sugar then add in my light corn syrup which is half a cup get that in there now keep in mind all uh, the half mixtures do cook a little quicker than a full mixture which the full mixture my full recipe is the 411 four cups of sugar one cup of water and one cup of light corn syrup all right and you want to cook this on medium high heat at 300 degrees on top of your stove, whether it's gas or electric. Um, gas or electric do cook a little different. So keep in mind, you may have to turn it up if it's electric. Turn it down a little bit if it's gas stove. All right. So if it's digital, it should be cooked between five or six or on six um, to be on the safe side. That was also questions uh, regarding cooking the mixture. So what I'm doing here is starting off with um, uh, adding the ingredients together and I will be doing the three different shades of purple. So I'm gonna start off with the lavender and I'm gonna show you how to get that. Purple can be a little difficult with achieving and try not to get your apples um, to be transparent and this is the process to do it just following my little techniques that I go by and I do so I use Chef Masters white my white is dripping here this is Chef Masters liquid gel white and I'm going to use violet this is by chef masters also and this is a liquid gel food coloring now i can achieve three different shades of purple just using this one bottle if you see it on my social media on your sweet connection on facebook you will see the three different shades of purple that i achieved all right so what you're going to do is add the white first of course the white will make it lighter and you want to add eight to ten drops of white. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Mix and combine that very well until it's all. No sugar is swelling around in there. All right. Let 
That's eight to ten drops. So for those that think or may think it's not enough, if you want to add three more, you can do so. One, two, three. It's not going to be no difference. The only difference that would be if you continue to add too much white, then your mixture will be too thick and it will become a taffy. All right, so keep that in mind. With this technique and method, you can also do, um, you can use with other brand of coloring. It don't have to be Chef Master. So if you use a different brand, long as it's a liquid gel food coloring, then you're okay with um, using that particular brand. Just follow the technique and method. All right. So to create this lavender, I'm going to add one drop of coloring. This violet, you have to be careful with it because if you add too much, then your mixture will be like a dark purple. So to create that lavender, I'm going to add one drop, okay? Okay, you may not can tell, but once I dip, you will see the lavender. All right. Sure. And then we're going to go ahead and add our candy thermometer, making sure the thermometer does not touch the bottom of the pot. The tip does not touch the bottom of the pot, so it, pot, so it won't give off a false reading. Just put it right in enough to where it's going to go into your mixture. And then you turn on your heat. Cook it to 300 degrees. Now, if the video becomes staticky, it may be because of the induction oven. And of course, I'm recording from my phone. All right. I will also add in my food, my flavor. If this is pineapple. Okay. It's a little ran oil flavoring. And you can add in your flavor between 200 degrees or 250 degrees. It really doesn't matter where you add it. But if you're starting off, I always teach um, this way where you either add at 200 degrees to 250 degrees so you will not forget to add in your flavor. All right? All right. So now that our mixer is, our mix is in and it's going, I will open the floor for any questions that you uh, may have. All right? So I have a few post notification questions that I'm going to um, answer um, that someone post. And I'm going to go right to those in my last video. And from Susie Agee. She asks, does it matter if you turn the apple upside down and put the stick in the bottom? It doesn't matter. However you, um, however you dip your apple, whether you can dip upright or upside down, is totally up to you. Just make sure when you insert the stick and the straw in the bottom or at the top that you wipe completely any juice or residue that comes back after you have um, pierced your stick and straw into your apple so that you won't get a bubble around the stick all right your apples must be completely clean and dry and for my cleaning method just visit or go 
to my videos on my channel so that you can see the cleaning process. All right. So the next post notification question Da -da 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 -da. Uh, Tadrio Berry eggs. With those measurements, she's talking about the measurements that I've been um, demoing these past couple of days. With those measurements, how many apples can you make? This is a half recipe. You can only make between two to three apples with this recipe it's really I, I broke this down for those um, that wanted to make two to three apples or I usually do the different color change so if I don't want to use a full mixture I use the half recipe and get between two to three or two to four apples depending on the size of your apples so this is like almost a lunchbox size apple and I probably would get four apples dipped with this recipe. If you want to add a little bit more, change the recipe from one of the ingredients in the recipe, which is the water. Instead of a half a cup of water, use three-fourths cups of water to give you a little bit more leverage in your medium to large apples. So if you're doing medium, um, two to three, large, still two to three. It just depends how, how big your apples are. All right. So now we'll go to some questions from the page. What up, sweet family? Let's see. Let's get some questions here. Oh, Tara, she said, I'm sure you've explained this before. After dipping my third or fourth apple, my mixture begins to thicken. Why does that happen? Great question. Um, the purpose of me doing these videos is to show you how much to measure out to achieve a color without um, getting that thickness and allow you to dip the um, majority of your apples. Okay? If you get to your fourth or third apple and it gets thick, you may have added too much coloring. Okay? You may have added way too much coloring trying to achieve a color and it, it thickens up. Now you can put it back on your stove to loosen it, but anytime you put um, candy mixture with coloring back to the heat, it tends to darken and shade um, your um, color so your color will change okay so when doing candy apples you do have to work swiftly but carefully you're welcome next question If I miss your questions, please be sure to leave the comments in the comment section below after the video if I if you really have a question that you want answered, I will go back and answer it if I don't get a chance to answer it during this live video. Hi, Ro. Is there a way you can show us how to achieve the color gray? Yes. I sure can. Um, this is a series that I'm going to be doing, so stay tuned. Make sure you got your post, no your notification bell on because I'm doing a series of colors. Okay, so I'm going through the shades of purple. Um, I already did the black, the blue. I did the light blue. And now I'm going through the shades of purple. So I'm going to do a lavender and then a deep purple. Um, and then I'm just going through the orange. I'm going to do some rose gold. Which I already have a gold video on here. So I'm going to do rose gold and then do silver. So stay tuned. Put your notifications on. 
and just stay tuned for it, okay? So with the lavender, this is an important note. Um, use a light tinted flavor, okay? If you use like a dark tinted flavor, it may change your color, all right? So this is pineapple and it's a light shade color uh, flavor. And just add a few drops to that. So you just want to keep in mind that you don't want to alter the color by using a dark tinted flavoring, okay? I always use an oil-based flavoring when flavoring my candy apples. All right? All right, let's go back to the questions. What consistency would I use to get less hard candy apples? Okay, I, like I always stated, candy apples are always is considered to be hard. If you don't want them to be too hard, um, you can, it's, it's, you know, I cook it to a hard rock, hard, um, a hard rock stage. So, you would probably go, hmm, I want to say 280 or 285. So, it won't be so hard. Anything lower than that, then it will become like a taffy. And then it may not last as long um, or hold up as long when it's time to deliver to your customer or for your customer to come pick it up. So, yeah, it, it varies um, in recipes. So, but with my recipe, I cook it to 300 degrees. All right. So, I am at the stage of dipping so I'm going to shut this off remove your thermometer put your thermometer in a glass um, cup of water so that you can clean that mixture off your thermometer Once it has reached your required temperature, make sure <laughs> make sure somebody said I love apple picking. When it has reached your required temperature, make sure that you do not go over that, especially dealing with light colors cuz it will change and alter the color. All right? Getting your already clean apple. Tilting your pot. Okay, make sure your bubbles settle. Go in and do a rotating turn. Also, someone asked, they said, oh, I seen you like double dip. If I double dip, especially working with a small recipe, I'm trying to cover the full apple and try to close oops I didn't touched it I'm really finna go in the double door my finger touched it so I'm going back in to fix that <laughs> so what I do is to get the fullness of coverage onto the top of my apple just make sure you go in into that angle, dipping to where you can get a full coverage. Let majority of your candy mixture weaken from the bottom of your apple. And I normally scrape the, the side of my pot. And 
as so. I'm trying to be careful that I don't get it on this. Place on the silicone mat. Even though I have more to dip. So I probably would get between four apples out of this. At this size. Okay. To get a good finish bottom. All right. Process of bagging your apples. Someone asks, what is bagging? Packaging your apple with a cellophane, cellophane um, bag, which is one of these bags. I'm not sure of the size, but I will put a link in the description box and show you how this done in this video. All right. So you don't want to bag right away. But if you do, because you want your apple to cool before you bag. But you can bag your apple as so, but leave the top of the bag open so that you don't lock in the moisture. You will do that for um, the clear boxes or any box. But if you bag and you close and tie it up, you are locking in the moisture and it's going to then break down your apple. All right. So you have to be careful and see, I've already started to mess that up because I put it straight on in. But you want to make sure that your apple is completely dry before bagging so that you don't mess it up. As you see, I just did there. So your apple has to completely dry. So that's why it's important to let your apple sit out before you get ready to bag, package, and whatever packaging you are um, using at that time. But this is how you achieve the lavender. Beautiful, shiny apple. You see me waving in the back. All right. And that's how you make lavender. All right. So before I go, I will take five more questions. Five more questions. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Okay. Here's question number one. How far in advance, meaning days, can you prepare your apple for an event? Great question. I would suggest that you, if you have an event on Saturday, all right, and say you have 25 apples, get your apples. Uh, I would clean my apples on Monday, let them sit for two days, and you can start dipping on Wednesday. Okay. Yes, you can dip the day day of, but who wants to dip the day of and be in a rush because you want your apples to be um, perfect. You want them to be bubble free. You want to be presentable, have them be presentable to your customer. So it's important that you do them way in advance. Okay. You can, even if you got the event on Saturday, you can clean your apples the Saturday before and you can start dipping on two days after that. Okay. Store them in a nice cool area and then package them and put them in the refrigerator into the event. All right. Question number two, my colors are something sometimes transparent. How do I fix this? This is the purpose of this video. So that you will prevent your apples from being transparent. If your apples are transparent, that means you're not adding in enough color or you didn't add a white to prevent it from being transparent. So if you just added the color, then you need to add a white, a liquid gel white. I recommend that you use Chef Master's white. 
if you use AmeriColor, for those that have ax, AmeriColor gives off white specks. Whether you add it at the end or you add it in the mixture, whatever, however you do it, white from AmeriColor gives off specks. So Chef Master so far and Wilton's Ice, uh, Wilton's White uh, works great when you want to color your apples. All right. Question number three. Uh, here's a good question. What if you have organic apples? Do you need to clean them? Yes, you do. Whether it's organic or not, it's still a, a wax that is covering your apple. Okay. Organic or not, still clean to remove the wax. The wax that is on your apple is like a protection to have um, while it's in produce. Okay. That's what keeps them shiny and pretty. That pretty green is to protect them from breaking down so quickly. So if it's an organic apple, you still have to clean the same way, you know, go through the cleaning process. Was that question number three? Question number four. Uh, what amount of candy will you need for 24 apples? Okay. What amount of candy you will need for 24 apples? Depending on the size of your apples, once again, you can do the full mixture. Four cups of sugar, one cup of water, one cup of light corn syrup. If you're doing 24 apples, at a small at a small size you will get full cover you should get full coverage if they're medium sized apples to a full mixture that's a full recipe then you will get between 10 to 12 apples if you use large apples using the full recipe then you will get between 8 to 10 apples it varies so if you have to make another mixture do so or you can make a full mixture and then add half, two cups of sugar, half cup of water, and a half cup of like corn syrup. All right. So a lot of people, someone had asked me about recipes. When you're doing a recipe and you know you, you're trying to get extra coverage, I would use my full recipe of the four cups of sugar, one cup of water, one cup of light corn syrup, then add in two cups of sugar, half cup of water, and a half cup of light corn syrup, where I know I'm going to get enough coverage for 24 to more apples, okay? It's not fully a doubled recipe, but it covers. Okay, so just understanding your recipes um, is important because if you need to add more, you can do that. Just know how much you're adding. All right. Question number five. Question number five. Let's see. Well, pretty much I just said that. Can you do... A uh, double mix. Uh, yes, I asked that question. I answered that question before. Yeah, yes, you can double the mix. That's double a recipe. You're doubling a recipe, meaning you're doubling in numbers. Four cups of sugar. I mean, eight cups of sugar, two cups of water, two cups of light corn syrup. It's nothing going to go wrong. You're just going to have a lot of mixture to work with, and you have to move swiftly but carefully. Okay, so let me go to another question. So, um, you just have to how to keep it from hardening. It shouldn't hard. It gets hard. So, you have to have your apples already prepped before you dip. So that's important. Have them prep way before you get ready to dip. And it shouldn't get hard. I have done it several times. Double the mixture. If you don't want to double the recipe, 
just like I stated, four cups of sugar, add, once you get the full recipe, add half of that recipe to the full mix, which would be six cups of sugar, okay? Six cups of sugar, and then you got one and a half cup of water, and then one and a half cup of light corn syrup. And I know somebody going to get that mixed up already. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, you have to move faster. You can't dip. Let it sit down and this, that. You have to be ready. <laughs> All right? All right, sweet gang. It's been real. I appreciate y'all for coming on in. That's my time. Stay tuned for the next video. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so y'all can see the series and more of Ro coming to give you life for show. And leave a comment in the comment section, y'all. Let me know what y'all want to see next. All right? Y'all stay tuned.